Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today we are talking about a really exciting new release coming from Button Shy, and this is Fantasy Form. This is designed by Lucas Gentry and is a spiritual successor to a previously released game called Space Shipped. Now I never played that game, so I kind of went into Fantasy Form with pretty blind eyes, not really knowing what to expect, other than that you are taking the role of an alchemist, using different elemental forms, and trying to defeat your rival. However, when I learned the actual gameplay and mechanics of this, I was really surprised at what is the core driving mechanism behind this game. Now let me give you guys a quick overview, kind of an idea how it plays, and maybe you'll be surprised too, but hopefully pleasantly surprised as I was learning how Fantasy Form plays. So like all button shy games, it is made up of 18 cards here, and we are set up for uh, the kind of first turn of the game. So the first thing you're going to notice is that we have a couple of different rows of cards here and a couple of cards off to the sides. So if you look at the bottom here, we are going to have our starting alchemist in its basic form. First goal you're going to have in a game of fantasy form is trying to attain an elemental form. And I'll explain to you in a moment how you're going to be able to do that. But starting the game off, you are just going to be a regular Joe Schmo alchemist. So you can see that is our character card here. And to the right of our character card, you'll see that there's a couple of numbers and that's going to be our health tracker because there are going to be different events and we'll eventually be doing combat with our rival that is going to cause us to lose health. What we're using to keep track of our health here is the second part of our kind of player loadout and that is going to be our equipment. The equipment serves both as its kind of power that it has and it also is used to track the um, health that you're going to have throughout the game. And a common theme you're going to see as I explain this game is that a lot of these cards are serving double or maybe triple duty. They get a lot, a lot of mileage out of just having 18 cards and quite frankly it is very impressive the ingenuity used to have all of this run so smoothly while having so many multi-purpose cards. The other two cards you're going to see on our player section here is going to be this little tracker. And so you can see it goes from 0 to 25, and that is going to be used to track shards. And these shards are what are going to be the currency we're going to use in this game to buy different items, to help attack our rival, and it's really going to be an important resource to keep track of as we're playing this game. Now the card that's used to keep track of your shards here is going to be your companion. So you can see here we start with a standard guide companion, but you'll have a chance as the game progresses to buy other companions that may have different abilities and help you in different ways. Now the other two rows of cards you're going to see here is going to be these three cards here, which are the encounter cards. The three cards to the right of that are the upgrades, kind of your market of where you're going to be able to buy equipment. And then this top row of six cards is going to be what's called the ethereal row. Because in addition to having companions and uh, different artifacts, which are your uh, kind of items, there's going to be essences. And here you can see there's four different types of essences. There's this orange, the pink, the blue, and the green. And each of those essences are going to have their own different abilities. And they're also going to be used to be able to get more shards. And then the last card you're going to notice off to the side here is going to be our rival. And our rival doesn't have anything right now, but at the end of the first round, it is going to take an elemental form. And after that, it is going to be able to start wailing on us. So let me run you guys through what a normal turn looks like and give you an idea of how you're going to interact with these different rows of cards. So the first area you're going to look at is the encounter set. So the first two cards are going to be used to resolve different events. So the leftmost card, you'll see it on the top, it has an Outlands Encounter and then a Forge Encounter. And so first you're going to do the Outlands Encounter and, you know, carry out whatever event it has here. In this case, it has gain two shards if at full health, otherwise heal one damage. Lucky me, it is the start of the game, I'm at full health, and so I'll use my Charge Tracker here to give myself two. On a standard difficulty game, you start with eight, so now we have a total of ten. Then you look at the middle card of the encounter row and you uh, resolve the forge encounter. And here it says, if you have more than one essence in your pack, you lose one. And like I said before, essences are these different kind of colored bottles that we'll be able to buy later, which we don't have any right now. Now the third card in the encounter set is what's going to drive the market. And when I said I was surprised by the kind of driving mechanism in this game, this is what I was uh, alluding to because 
The way you're going to be able to get more shards is to buy these essences and then sell them on future turns at varying um, amounts of value. And the way you're going to know the current market values of these is the third card of the encounter set. You can see the oranges are going for one, greens are going for four, blues are going for eight, and pinks for three. And so as you go from round to round, this middle card is going to shift down so you can see what the next round's amount of market prices are going to be, even the next round, because eventually this leftmost card will make its way to being the market card and you'll be able to determine what you're gonna be able to sell things for. So the way you're going to interact with these different essences is during the market phase. So the first thing you're gonna do on a turn is resolve the Outlands encounter, then you're gonna resolve the Forge encounter, and then you're going to go into the market phase. And that is when you're going to be able to buy and sell these different essences as you see fit. You can also buy these different items that are on the current markets area. So maybe on my turn, look, these oranges are going for one, and then I know in the next round that they're gonna go for three. So maybe I'm gonna spend one shard, and then I'm gonna buy this essence and add it to my pack here. And now the amount of essences you can hold is determined by your current alchemist form. So you can see at the start of the game, I have a little two on here, and that means I can have a max of two essences. So then these slide in to fill in. And now I still have, you know, nine shards left over. I could buy another essence if I want. I can save it. Um, you know, look at this. These green essences are gonna go for eight for the next round, so why the heck not? Let's go ahead and spend four essences. One, two, three, four because I'm gonna be able to cash out pretty nicely in the next round there. So we've bought our essences and now we can go to the end of our market phase. I'm pretty happy with what we bought here. I'm gonna be able to sell them for the next turn. So I'm feeling pretty good right now. Now the last phase you're going to do is either the rival or the exploration phase. So as long as there are two or more cards left over in the ethereal row, you're gonna go into the exploration phase. So in this case, we're gonna do uh, move into the next round so we're going to discard the rightmost market card, shift these down, move our encounter card over here, and everything shifts down. And then the most right card in the ethereal row joins the encounter set. And now we are ready to move into the next round of playing. So now I have a new Outlands encounter. So I'm going to lose one essence of my choice unless I have this symbol. Now I don't have this particular symbol on any of my items, so I'm gonna have to lose one of my essences. And I'm gonna choose to lose this orange essence because it's gonna be able to, it's a little less valuable than the other one is right now, which kind of is unfortunate. Then I'll do the forge encounter, which is take one damage or two if I have an elemental form. Luckily I don't have an elemental form yet, so I'm gonna lose one health and that's gonna resolve the forge encounter. Now we're gonna move back into the market phase here. Like I said, the greens I bought for four and now I can sell it for eight, which is a pretty good deal. So I'm going to sell this green essence for eight. So I was able to sell that green essence for eight, which is a pretty good uh, you know, net gain there. Now you might've noticed I kind of got hurt by this Outland and Forge encounter and I could have used my torch and guide to help prevent that. So you see the torch's ability here is once per turn, I can look at the rightmost ethereal row card. So I can look at the back of this and I can see what the encounter card is going to be. So here I can gain the least expensive essence if I have one of these two symbols. And so I mentioned the symbols before and the way you're going to get access to those different symbols is by different items or different companions. So you can see here this magnetine hammer here would give me access to these three different symbols. So if I resolve a card that calls for one of these symbols, I would confirm that I have it, and that'll change how I interact with a different encounter set. So I just sold that essence for eight there, and now I have a chance to buy more essences. So you can kind of see uh, the pinks are gonna go up in value a little bit, the blues are gonna go up by three, the greens are gonna only go down, and then the Oranges are pretty set at three. So right now, my best bet is to maybe buy one of these different, the blue essences. So I'm gonna buy this one for seven. Now you'll also notice that a lot of these different essences have different abilities. They can heal you. They can let you um, shuffle the ethereal row and the discard to deal out a new set of ethereal rows. And so they could just generally change the game state. So if you don't want to just sell them, you can use them for their ability, which offers a nice bit of flexibility if, you know, 
maybe they aren't being sold for what you want for, you can use those essences in different ways. Now, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit here because I wanna show you guys what happens when there is not enough ethereal cards here to go through an exploration phase. So let's hypothetically say that those all got discarded and this is the last card in my um, ethereal row here. So instead of going into an exploration phase and resetting everything, we are going to go into a rival phase. And what happens there is that all of these cards are going to get discarded. So what we're gonna do there is discard all of our cards. And now at the end of the first rival phase, we're going to reveal cards from the top of the deck until we reveal an elemental form. And that first elemental form we reveal is going to be what our rival is going to take on as their form. So here, it's gonna take on the water form. And I'll explain how we're gonna do combat in just a second here. So at the end of that first rival phase, you're going to give your rival the elemental form, and then you're going to reset the rest of the area here like we did to start the game. So we'll put three encounter cards, three upgrade cards, and then deal out the six ethereal cards. Well, in this case, there's only five, right? Because I was holding this ethereal, um, I was holding this essence in between rounds. So you only fill out the ethereal row as many, um, with as many cards as you have. And so after that rival phase ends, we go back into resolving outland encounters, forge encounters, and market phases. Gameplay is gonna go on and on. You're gonna be buying essences, selling essences, getting different equipment until you get to another rival phase. And I just wanna explain real quick, how do you actually beat your rival? And so the way you're going to be able to do damage to your rival is that for every four shards you spend, you can do one damage to your rival. In the case of them having the water form, it costs six instead of four, so it's even more expensive. But I believe that this form has less health, so it kind of balances out. So not only do you have to kind of budget your shards to buy and sell different essences, they're also used for combat. So you also need to save enough that if you're going into that rival phase to do damage to your rival. Because the other timer that's on this game is that you'll notice on the rival card, it goes down from four, three, two, and one. So every time you start a rival phase, you're going to rotate this card to remind you how many rival phases you have left before you automatically lose the game. So that means you have to do all that damage within four rounds of your rival getting the element of form. So there's a little bit of a timer on this game where if you don't do it before then, you're totally done. And so that pretty much sums up how the game generally plays. You're going to be resolving different encounters. You're going to be going through those different market phases, buying different things, and then eventually doing combat with your rival. One more quick thing to mention, you saw that our rival got a elemental form at the end of that first phase. We have to buy our elemental form and we can't actually do damage to our rival until we have one. And you could see that these are pretty expensive, they're 20 shards. And so usually that first couple turns of the game, your focus is getting you know 20 plus shards and trying to get that elemental form because that's the only way you're going to be able to actually start to progress to winning the game. And if you guys are enjoying the video, please remember to like and subscribe. I'd love to have you guys around the channel. We play a lot of different solo games, a lot of different button shy games. So if this is your jam, be sure to subscribe and join the channel. All right, back to the video. So like I said, I think that my biggest surprise while playing Fantasy Form is that the real like core beating heart of this gameplay loop is that buying of selling of different essences at different market values and kind of predicting how you're going to be able to make more shards. It's not super complex or anything. You know, you could see in a couple turns what those different essences are gonna sell for, but it's still an interesting puzzle because there's also encounters that can cause you to lose different essences and really throw your plans out of whack. I think that's why it's also important to kind of keep a mental note of okay, I know this encounter card hasn't come up yet. It's probably gonna come up in the future. I should probably prepare to you know, be ready for that. I think having the different symbols on different cards and the way it changes the different way you interact with events is really interesting because while it is really rooted in this economical buying and trading of essences and shards, I think that the accompanying mechanisms of having these encounters, having this kind of combat with your rival, really complement 
the, the market side of it really quite well. It doesn't feel so abstract that you're just buying and selling things. You know, you can also use the essences for their abilities. And so this marriage of, you know, buying and trading speculation with this kind of like fantasy interaction of combat is just really, really fun. I, I've really, truly enjoyed my, my games of this. It's a, it's a tough game. Um, I think I've only won like once or twice out of like a dozen or so games. But again, it plays so smoothly. Once you get into the flow of resolving these encounters, buying and selling these cards, it just, it flows really nicely. The multi-use cards, the way you kind of flip them over to reset these different rows is really intuitive. It just, you feel really slick like a casino card dealer or something, you know, dealing out these different cards. And it's just a really, really fun game. I don't know how this compares to Spaceship, but the way these different multi-use cards are implemented, it just feels really smooth, really well refined, and I really enjoy it. I think that the elemental forms are very interesting. There's four of them, and you can see that they kind of pair against each other. So if you see your rival with a certain elemental form, and you know that one kind of counters it, you want to almost wait to take that elemental form, and that gives a little bit of cool flavor of going against your rival that, oh, it has the water one, I want the fire one. It's just kind of a cool little, um, you know, back and forth that you're going with. So I think that if you are not into like economic games, I don't want that to kind of scare you away. I think I'm not a big fan of them either, but the implementation of having this in this cool like fantasy combat setting really, really worked for me. I really, really enjoyed Fantasy Form. Great, great solo game. So if you're looking for something with a little bit of you know, fantasy combat, but also a little bit of market speculation trading in a very just nice, smooth, um, good looking package, I would really suggest you check out Fantasy Forum. It really surprised me, I really loved it, and now I wanna go back and try Space Shipped because if it's anything like this, I want to give it a shot. So if you guys have any questions about Fantasy Forum, please let me know in the comments below, and be sure to check this out on Kickstarter. I believe it's going up um, this week that the video is going live. So if you're interested, be sure to check it out. I'd like to thank Buttonshy for providing a review copy of this game, and while they do provide the game, the opinion is all of my own. And if you want to see a full gameplay video of me failing to defeat my rival in fantasy form, be sure to let me know as well. So I'd like to thank you guys again for watching, coming by the channel, and I'll see you on the next video. Quick little side tangent here, this really gave me um, Stormlight Archive vibes, because the uh, the shards, right? Like they're used both as currency in that world and as like fuel for magic. And so it kind of felt like this where you're like using it in economics to like buy these different items, but you're also using it to fuel your combat with your rival. Just a little bit of a, a connection I felt while playing this. I don't know if it was intentional or not, but it made me pretend I was, uh, you know, surd binding and doing different stuff, which was fun for me personally, but I doubt that will uh, apply to a lot of people, but okay.